This is one of the download pages on the UK government's Open Geography portal. The polygons covering the UK are the local authority districts, one of the administrative divisions of the UK. On the left is the polygon data available in a number of formats. Like with images, text, audio or video, there are a variety of popular formats for storing spatial data, and in this video we'll discuss three. Before jumping into them, I want to mention something else called the well-known text representation of geometry, which is a markup language specifically for representing polygons. Here is how to specify a point, hopefully it's fairly self-explanatory, the x and y coordinates are separated by a space. This is a line, the commas are used to separate the points that define the line. This is a polygon, note that we have to explicitly close it, unlike Shapely which closes polygons for you. We have other types like geometry collections which are containers for multiple geometry objects. WKT is a very simple way to define polygons. The file formats we'll look at are a little more complicated because they attempt to capture more information. Probably the easiest type of geographic data format for data scientists is GeoJSON. This is similar to JSON, but specific to geographic information. Note the top level tag is called feature collection. The word feature comes up a lot. Basically, it's just a generic term for any location, site, area, or basically anything that you could put on a map. For example, this map has several point features, the campsites, a line feature, which is a road, and a very big polygonal feature, the lake. GeoJSON is fairly self-explanatory. A typical one looks like this. Here we see a point, which is specified by a single pair of coordinates. If you've seen JSON data before, this should be very familiar. If not, you've seen Python dictionaries, which are also virtually identical. Within GeoJSON, we can have different types of geometric object. Here's a polygon. Again, note that we have to close it explicitly. Each feature can have properties. For example, things like elevation or population. The next format we'll look at is KML, which stands for Keyhole Markup Language. KML is especially popular for use with Google products like Google Earth. Since this is such a popular platform, it's worth being aware of it. KML is a tag-based markup language like HTML or XML, so it's a bit more structured than GeoJSON. The key objects are the place marks. These are basically equivalent to features. They specify some place that could appear on a map. Geometric objects are specified by tags, and other tags associate different information with the place. There's a lot more to KML. Here I'm just showing you the very basics, but if you want to learn more, Google have a lot of tutorials. The final data format, which is very popular and very common, is the shapefile, which was developed by a company called ESRI for use with their popular GIS software. Shapefiles are rather complicated. For a shapefile, you get at least three files, actually. The shp file contains most of the information. The shx file is an index that allows the software to jump around the main file, and the dbf file contains information for each file in a database format. You usually get a prj file, too, which tells you the coordinate system that was used. Since shapefiles are rather complicated, it's best to deal with them via specialized libraries. Some good ones in Python for dealing with shapefiles are Fiona, PyShape, or GeoPandas, though GeoPandas internally uses Fiona. Let's show how to use shapefiles by downloading one and looking at it. I downloaded the World Borders dataset from the thematic mapping website. We import Fiona and open the shapefile in the standard Python way. Note we only need to give the name of the shapefile, not the other helper files. Just like other file formats we looked at, shapefiles are organized as a collection of features which we can iterate over. This is the first feature, representing the islands of Antigua and Barbuda. We have the geometry part, which tells us the shape of the islands. Notice it's a multi-polygon, because there are two islands. Then we have the properties tag, which keeps track of a number of attributes of this feature, for example, population, area, and name. We can then use Shapely shape function, which is designed to turn exactly this kind of geometry object into a Shapely polygon. We can also store the population data in a dictionary. This is how I prepared the data, which was plotted at the end of the previous video. Joining the data manipulation in this video to the plotting stuff in the previous one, you should be able to make this map. Now we have to understand different map projections in order to make it look a little bit nicer. 